centers of today. So, oh. um, first of all, sorry. So um, after a quick introduction, um, what we're gonna look is um, the calendar, as already mentioned, the definition and key terms like BA, offer types, the tips for job raising and best practices, and uh, resources information access, and an open Q&A session, which we try to keep um, as open as possible so that everyone can really ask the questions. And if there's anything that's not clear yet, make sure to ask those so we can answer them and also to share info with each other to make sure that everyone's on the same info level. Um, today with me, we have Kinga, who's the exchange coordinator from Poland and Olga, who's the head of operations um, from IS to Global and myself, uh, the incoming exchange coordinator from Switzerland. And um, now, I will give over to Kinga and she's going to just give you an overall overview and introduction of what we do and also um, the different programs and member times that we have. Hello, everyone. Uh, and it's very nice to we have so many participants during today's session. And we will start with uh, very basic information about the exchange program because we also learned that we have quite diverse audience uh, with some new members as well. So that's why to, to explain the uh, basic information about the um, exchange program. So as you all may know, uh, IST stands for uh, International Association for the Exchange Students for Technical Experience. And the, our main pro, uh, profile is to provide the exchange uh, program. And basically the main principle of the program is to, pro, uh, is to have also incoming and outgoing exchange and uh, it's great if our numbers are balanced so that we send the students and we receive we receive students and the perfect um, perfect situation is when we take care about the balanced numbers so that we send the student uh, one student and receive one student but of course sometimes it's not possible but every committee should take care about the balanced um, uh, numbers of the exchange and the next slide, Hannah, please. To make clear, um, because as I mentioned, we have um, a diverse audience, we would like to uh, briefly remind you about all the member types in IST we have. Uh, so we have three different types, cooperating institutions, associate members, and full members. Um, despite the fact that we maybe are different, we have different, we are differently registered, but uh, all the types of the members have equal rights and duties regarding the exchange. So no matter the type of the member you are, you should and you have to provide uh, exchanges, uh, exchange opportunities for, for the students. And the basic um, difference between cooperating institution and associate member is that cooperating institution can be um, university. So you, you don't need to cover the whole country within the exchange as it's uh, in the in case of associate member. And um, after some time, you can also become full member and full members have full right duties during uh, to, to make a decision during the uh, general uh, conferences happening until now once per year and starting from um, changes in the calendar that we will um, discuss briefly two times in a year. One will be uh, on site and one will be online. And to make also to stress out the different internship programs that we offer, we also prepared like short summary of the um, of the a short summary and brief information about our internships and why IST um, program is so unique. So you can use also this information as a selling points among your employers and maybe among your students. So uh, our internships, first of all, are paid internships because we um, that's the main point of the program that we provide the um, salary or the stipend that is um, enough to cover the basic expenses for the for the student we cooperate with uh, companies uh, or universities so uh, our students are applying for the offers that are prepared uh, for um, for our program so basically we guarantee that we uh, that this placement will be um, is fixed 
And then we provide also application support on every step working with them, with the employers and universities, and of course, administrative assistance. And uh, we also provide some social activities during the during stay of the members. And since uh, more than 75 years, um, we had thousands of students who, who gained an experience. And here you can see on the slide also short testimonial from one student uh, from from um, that was taking part in the exchange with uh, and we also prepared um, the table with the summary of internship programs we offer so um, as we experienced um, lastly uh, some changes in the namings we would we wanted to make it clear what type of offers we have uh, in IST so basically we have exchange offers uh, that are limited to single student so so uh, we sent one nomination uh, from a country and one nomination is received um, by the employer um, and usually this type of um, exchanges is realized during the annual conferences or exchange sessions that will be happening with the adjusted uh, IST calendar. And uh, this is um, mm. usually one-to-one -one principle. Oh, yeah. Then we have global offers that can be published within um, the whole year. Um, that's also our goal to have the whole year um, exchange. And global offers are open to multiple student nominations from various committees. Usually it's three to five um, nominations that are received by the, by the employer. And um, then employer decides um, on based on the profile of the candidates and the best application uh, to accept the, the student. We have also, we are open also for the um, opportunities as reserved offers that um, then there is um, usually it's prearranged specifically per, for particular uh, student with a specific employer and uh, IST is as a supporter or sometimes we are just processing the, the nomination, but it also gives opportunity to use our network to, to offer this kind of internships for, for our students. And now I would like to give a word, uh, give a word to, to Olga so she can explain you uh, in detail the adjusted um, IST calendar, so new IST calendar. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so as uh, Hannah mentioned and, and Kinga mentioned like in the very beginning, IST is based on exchange. How we do the exchanges, it will not happen without the commitment and the cooperation between the committees members we use it um you know, like replacing so does not uh, matter if we call member committee you should understand it's it's the same so first of all to make it happen we need to cooperate and how we cooperate okay as now we have many uh many media um, the emails zoom other tools but as we know, and uh, what's really crucial for any cooperation, and it does not matter what business you do, meeting people, knowing people, what uh, brings relationship and trust between the partners, because in the end, we are, each committee is an exchange partner to any other committee. We need to build the relations, we need to know each other, we need to understand each other, in other words, we need to meet and talk to each other and discuss what we can achieve. So I guess the calendar is um, like a schedule of meetings organized during the IST exchange year to facilitate this relations building and building the network between the committees. So <clears throat> as, as Kinga said, we have many like new people. So uh, we we have many different calendars in the world. So I guess the calendar starts in September. So this is when we start our exchange here. First of September, we start the exchange here. And then what's also important, we have October. October, this is starting exchange here in September means we finish the exchange here in August. So that's why in October, we also have the results of previous exchange here available. And we believe in that data and data-driven data decisions. So that's why we think it's important to have data as a summary for the for the plans uh, you you and uh, your st exchange strategy you set for the next exchange here. So 
The results of previous data are published in October, and then in November, and this is something new we have implemented just this year, we have annual conference. Annual conference, it's always the biggest event in IST calendar. This is also the, also consider it as a big family meeting where every committee should send representatives uh, and this representatives should take part actively in the program. So general conference, uh, this is the general assembly you may know from different associations. Uh, what's very, very important, especially when we talk about exchanges, is the bilateral agreements and exchange. So this is the moment when, it, when you meet your exchange partners, other committees, and first of all, meet and get to know each other and also understand what do you need, what are your needs, what, uh, what internships you have to offer, uh, what's uh, what your students need and this is the bilateral agreement part and exchange so in November the main idea of the meetings between the committees is to sit uh, together discuss what and how can we achieve in translating it really to the concrete outcomes it's okay how many students uh, each committee wants to send and receive to each other so what we imagine that in November, each committee is having like a deals defined with other committees. Of course, it doesn't have to be exactly like the exact number, but I think you can discuss if it's up to five internships, if it's 10, if it's more. So this is exactly what's the idea of the meetings in, um, in November. And of course, if you already have internships available, especially with early nomination deadlines, this is also more than welcome and recommended to exchange these internships. So this is the, the idea and the core uh, of our work in, in November. And um, this is also something new because we are used to do the exchanges at the annual conference. Uh, and really trade internships at the annual conference between each other. But this is not new because in the in, in the previous years, we were used to send out in, uh, in, uh, in autumn here, something what we call list of requested offers. So each committee was informing each committee what uh, they expect from each other. So this is exactly this moment. And now instead of sending uh, emails, we can sit together and discuss. So that's really, really important. And even as I know, we have new committees here. So let's say the annual conference, it's it's the best moment to do it. It's the start of this process. But if you have missed the annual conference or if you did, didn't manage to meet with all the committees you wished, you still can do it. There is no obligation just to be limited to discuss the bilateral agreement to the time of the annual conference is the best moment because uh, from next conference on that this meeting will be in person only. This was also decided that we want to meet in person, not a hybrid anymore. Uh, so that's that's also important. But if you are worried that you, you miss this, don't worry. Zoom is here and any other tool and you can still set the meeting with the other committee. What's also important for the annual conference and also to build the relations between the committees, uh, the annual conference is also the platform for knowledge sharing, strategic discussions, and also how we all can develop uh, our association. So this is the, um, the annual conference. From this year, it will happen always mid-October, mid-November. The dates are always decided by the general conference. But also what's very important to mention in November, we also say this is the last moment to really focus on job raising. So, or finalize job raising as we put here, because of course you, you need to build relations with the potential internship hosts, employers before, but November, this is really the moment when we really have to really finalize the, the job raising and start collecting the internships as such. Uh, because why November? Because based on the bilateral agreements, you know, what have you promised to the other committees? And that's also now mentioned, okay, November, and then until end of January, 
first half of um, February, committees have time to raise the doubts you have promised to each other during the bilateral agreement session. And as always, we have used uh, to do exchanges in January. This is still happening in January only. We will do this time. Uh, we will do it online, only online this time. Um, we have our exchange platform. We don't need any more to exchange papers. We have meeting tools. So the main exchange session will still happen in January. And this I want to stress, this is the moment when all like all the internships should be exchanged. Like all internships you have promised to the other committees, you should offer to them and you should have them ready. Maybe I'm repeating myself, but I really want to make sure uh, you, you got this point. Uh, of course, if you have agreed with the committees for different schedule, this is still possible, but the standard is we finalize the exchanges in January. And then uh, what also Kiminga mentioned already in April, uh, again, we have an online event and this will be the general conference. So again, the delegates from the committees meet for the general assembly online. So one day more focus on, I would say administrative issues like accepting some reports, accepting budget, etc. Simply the topics where like less discussion is required and what we can easily achieve doing it online. But also in April, we, we organize exchange session online because there are still maybe offers uh, that were not exchanged in January, some new offers. So this is still a time to really finalize and use the internships because also what our activity report says, we have far too many unused offers. So the whole committee, the whole community of Ayesta, we put a lot of effort to raise internships, to raise jobs. And then in the end, we are not able to, to really use them. So this is really, now we have like three moments to exchange the internship. So we really think this is, and the aim is, and also please see it like this, that all of internships you raise, we want to execute. Means we want to see a student on this internship. So this is the general idea. And now I think we can move on to the dates for this season. So this is the calendar dates for this exchange year 2025. So in already in the future, we have the 25, 2025 exchange year already. Uh, you can take a print screen of it. We will share it as well. It will be also attached to the, the, the last board meeting minutes. Um, but please memorize those dates in gray already happen. But what's important is here like two bold deadlines. So again, deadline to raise internships for the con for the other committees as agreed in the bilateral exchange um, agreements. This is 23rd of January, 2025. Sorry, I see I didn't change the, the, the year here, but we talk about 2025 next, next January. And then the online exchange session, what we call winter, knowing there it, it's not winter everywhere, but it will be 23rd, 25th January, 2025. So in a bit more than one month, uh, and that will be covering Thursday, Saturday, to adapt to different weekends and different weeks. That's, that was on the request. These dates were decided by the general conference. So if you haven't started the job raising yet, this is the last, very last moment. And I know Hannah and Kinga will give you tips on how to do it. And just quickly to do, as you see, the online exchange session will be 10, 12 April. Then online general conference, it's 10, 10th of April. I think the official invitation will be sent out today. And then we finish the exchange here in August, uh, end of August, 2025. Then we have October, I in IS today in October. And what's important, we already have a date and the venue for the next annual conference. 
please bear in mind this will be in person event only and also bear in mind that the participation in the annual conference is mandatory for the members and the next annual conference will take place in canada prince edward island and charlottetown and that will be from 14th to 19th november 2025 so this is already fixed. You can already start looking for the flights just to be sure you get the best deal. And now, uh, this is still my slide. <laughs> okay, so just to sum up, uh, what's, what we see as advantages of the new calendar and what I think is also very important to mention that this calendar is not coming out of the blue, out of my mind, out of the board mind. That was really the work uh, done by, by many committees. We had a um, dedicated task force led by, I think, IS to Switzerland, IS to Austria with strong uh, support from IS to Poland, IS to Canada and Spain and were many, many countries involved. It was also based on the discussion with, uh, with, with committees from different regions, different type of committees. So this is the joint effort. So we believe this is how the whole association sees the new calendar and what was also accepted at, uh, formally at the last uh, general conference, like less than a month ago. So what are the advantages? Um, we talk about the advantages because we know each change may be painful but we really want to to make sure you see it as um as an opportunity this new calendar to to have really more interaction and relationship building between the committees um, and also that the exchange is based on understanding of committees needs meaning you you have the whole year to exchange just meet and make the deals uh, what we also see is a more balanced workload so you can uh, distribute the work of exchange for three exchange sessions and the same is with the nominations so it can be we believe that might bring more quality uh, and also what's very very important to to mention that this is the adoption to different academic years and different employer expectations especially when we have different uh, uh, periods of internships. And what was also very, very important that this will give more time for discussions uh, during the annual conference and general conference sessions, like having two general conference sessions. So uh, we can take the decisions based on more information and more input from different uh, perspectives, different committees, because we will not be stressed with the, with the time uh, pressure. So these are the advantages of the new calendar. Um, if you have any questions, we are here, but I think the Q&A we have at the end of the presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Olga. Um, now I'll just go over through um, some definitions of key terms. Um, the ones that we chose were also the ones where when I started three years ago, I was a bit confused. Oh, what does that mean? Everyone keeps talking about the BS, BEAs, what is that? <laughs> and um, in the end, as Olga and has already mentioned, um, it's kind of an agreement that is set between different committees. So it's like the bilateral exchange agreement um, in relation to the number um, that the countries and committees want to send or receive, also the type of internships and the study fields. And um, this process, happens on the exchange platform so there you can have um, you fill out the BEA for every country so for every country that you want to exchange with you can put in I'm looking for an x amount of internship offers and uh, preferably in the study fields and you can also see what the other country is looking for. You can also adapt this to how much information you need. Um, I understand that some countries um, have a lot of students from different study fields, so they might prefer to just enter a number of overall exchanges that they would like to do. Um, you can also give more details like the exact time frame of internships you're looking for or the exact study field. Um, and the more info you have, the better, because the goal of these BEAs 
basically to get to know each other, to understand each other's needs best, better so that in the end you can um, prepare for every meeting with every country and already put some offer for those countries maybe aside to show them to see, oh, I remember that, for example, Brazil contacted me recently and filled out in the BEA that they're looking for a mechanical engineering offer. This matches their criteria, so maybe that's worthwhile um, to bring to the exchange. And in the end, by filling it out, it just makes it easier for everyone. And as already mentioned, gives every committee a better idea what the other committee is looking for. And that everything, all the BAs will be filled out in the exchange platform. And I think we all understand that, of course, it does take some effort to fill those out. But in the end, it is really worthwhile because it saves so much time during the exchange because you can prepare for the exchange. And then once you are at the exchange, you already have the offers that the country might be looking for. And filling out the BEAs just makes everything more efficient. Also, um, as already mentioned, we have um, the activity report, which we also sometimes just shorten to AR, and also the activity report questionnaire. So the report itself is just a quantitative report on the IS exchange program, which is issued each year, usually in around October. And it just shows you how um, the countries, how many exchanges happened, um, how many offers were filled, um, how many offers were unfortunately canceled or were not filled, just to give a good overview about um, what happened in the past year. And the ARQ, the Activity Report Questionnaire, um, that is the tool that IST uses to gather and generate statistics um, on all exchange-related aspects, um, including all members and cooperating institutions. And that one is um, also taking place through the EP, which is the exchange platform. And there you can fill in, you usually ask towards the end of the exchange here to put in all the information double check the information, make sure that the info is correct. And also you can there give feedback on the personal, um, how should I say, like the personal um, experience you had with the, the different countries regarding exchange. Like, did it go smoothly? Were maybe like the waiting times too long? Um, how was the support for students? Also to make sure that just everyone has the feedback and can improve for the following year or can just make uh, do a great job as before. Um, just the learning tool for everyone. And now recently, um, we also have the exchange efficiency report, which will be published shortly. And um, this one gives a basic overview about the key exchange facts for every country to see it so that everyone can also see certain information of the other countries. And for your own country or for your own committee, um, you can in this report also see some more in-depth info about your exchange efficiency. And um, that information would only be visible in more detail to yourself. But this is also to just um, also use the data that we have and collect on the EP um, and put it into a tool and a report that we can learn from and that we can use for the future. Then um, regarding job raising, as already mentioned when it came to the calendar, November is the time where you should finalize the job raising um, for the exchange session in January. The basic steps of job raising itself is, first of all, you have to contact the employer. Um, so you need to make sure that you look for companies, organizations, institutions that may be interested in hosting students from other countries and also to promote um, IAS to explain to them what IAS is, what we do, what the benefits um, are of joining IAS. And this um, process is usually done by phone, email, um, meetings, maybe also going to career fairs, connecting face-to-face -face with com employers and just, um, yeah, networking and trying to um, reach out to different companies and potential employers. And once you have the feeling that there is an employer that um, would be interested in joining, 
you negotiate um, the terms of the internship opportunities. So I think this is something that is different for every country. Um, so this is where you, first of all, discuss what um, salary the company can pay. And because we also always want to make sure that it is a paid internship and that it is a pay that a student can live with in the certain country, in the country itself. And um, this is where you have to make sure that it just matches with the criteria that IASTA has. Um, you also discuss the needs of the employer, like the internship duration, um, what responsibilities the intern would have, and um, all the other details to make sure that it aligns with IASTA standards. Um, this is also something where every country can also um, discuss certain things themselves. So, for example, in Switzerland, how it works is that, um, for example, universities and um, public institutions, they don't have to um, pay a fee to work with IESTA. But, for example, if they are a company and they join the IESTA program and they find an intern yeah. through the IESTA program, that's part of the way that IESTA Switzerland funds itself is that they then pay a small fee to IESTA for the whole process. But at the same time, they can be assured that the interns are well taken care of and the selection process um, is also taken care of by part um, by IESTA Switzerland. So just as a hint, this is where you discuss all the surrounding things um, of the either contract or just the relationship that you're going to have with the employer from then on. And once that negotiation process is done, you create the official documentation with the specifics, um, the work definition and responsibilities, duration and numeration details. And this is then, as you always called it, the O form um, or the job offer description, which you then also see and share on the EP and share it with the other countries so that they can see it and can then nominate um, their students if they find a student that matches what the employer is looking for. And to give you some um, more insights, um, how different countries do it and also how it can be done in different ways. Um, in Switzerland, how we do the job raising is that um, we have overall five people that are employed in Switzerland and that take care of all things that have to do with the exchange itself. And that means that we are Matthias and I, we are responsible for the incoming part, and we are the ones that are responsible for all the employer relations. So once we have established contact with the employers, we guide them through the entire pro uh, process. Um, we send updates regarding the nomination repro uh, process. We send reminders. Usually when we see that an internship is over, and they have not yet published a follow-up internship offer with us, um, we double check with them if and when exactly they want to upload an offer again with us. Um, this is something that you have to do or that we do and that I highly recommend everyone to do um, to just always stay in touch with them through the entire year and not just when November is where you then um, realize, oh, the next exchange session is soon. Maybe I should try to get some offers now, but to just really stay in touch with them for the year, call them. If they have interns, visit them, meet in person. Um, recently, I ended up visiting seven of our employers and it's always great because especially when a student is there, you get to see how they work, where they work. They give you um, feedback on the intern, the intern gives feedback on the employer and um, it gives you a better overview of the internships that you publish an offer on IAS itself and also helps you to um, answer questions of other committees better if they have questions regarding the work offered or the employer. And at the same time, it's also always a great way to um, find out if there's um, something that needs to be discussed. So I had a discussion during a meeting with one of the employers and it turned out that the offer that we had published through them was maybe not necessarily published in the right study field. 
And um, that is just something that you find out when you have face-to-face -face discussions or also nowadays through Zoom um, or MS Teams with the employer and just learning with them, from them. And now in November, what we do is that we call every single employer that we had an internship with in the last two years to see if they have an internship offer for the following year. And um, once we have those through, we go through the employers that had published an internship offer with us in the past five years. So it's just reaching out with them, calling them, following up, sending them the offers that they had in the past, asking if we can republish it. And also if there's anything else that we have to keep in mind or have to adjust. And that's just one important aspect of job raising. Um, and I think that's an aspect that is usually um, a bit or can be easily forgotten is the importance of having a good relationship with the employer throughout the entire year so that you can really depend on them that you will have offers for the exchange sessions and that they will also participate in the program every year because we have a lot of employers that really when you meet them they tell you that IS the internship is like a fixed um, part of their exchange of their year at their work. So every year they put the budget aside for an IS to internship. And that's because they have lifelong relationships um, with us. Um, we have employers that have been working with us for t over 25 years. And um, that's just great. And then you know that you have those employers that you can definitely rely on. And in Poland, they do it a bit differently. <laughs> Yes, so we do different. We do the things differently because we are example of a differently run country. Uh, because Poland is a student run country, and that's why we thought together with Hannah that it would be great to provide you different perspectives from the professional run country, so ISD Switzerland and ISD Poland that we totally dependent on uh, students job raising. So um, as I highlighted here on the slide, the main process for us usually starts in October that's also connected with the start of an academic year um, so our students are coming back to the universities then our local committees um, are discussing the, uh, their strategies and how they want to approach the employers we have our internal databases so we keep records of the employers that we cooperate with for um, for many years and um, we also uh, have we cooperate both with universities companies and I would say I would uh, our um, numbers in terms of the offers offered by the universities and employers are I quite are balanced so around 50% of the offers we have from the universities and 50% of the offers uh, from them from the employers uh, so the process as I mentioned is um, is done by by the local committees so by students located there and the national committees um, committee supervising the whole process and um, usually uh, the, um, the supervisor of the process is the uh, national secretary. So the job of the national secretary is to conduct the meetings, with follow up meetings with the, um, with the, with the local committees to check their progress, to, to see how many contacts they established and how many um, offers we will have uh, in the, during the following uh, season. Um, this 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 task is not easy because as we are an example of the student run country, we need to always keep in mind that um, every year the contact person can change. So this thing is totally different comparing to to ISD Switzerland, where usually the contact person uh, remains the same for quite long period of time. Um, so we also need to make sure that um, that the contact person, um, even though if the person, let's say, who raised the, the offer, then it's different than the person who is supervising the whole process with the university of company, uh, we need to make sure that we really keep in touch with the employer and forward the information about the changes from, from our side. Um, uh, of course, like we try, if this is possible, to visit the companies in person on in different stages. So basically, starting from the job raising, uh, but uh, sometimes we also go and to, to visit the interns. But for us, it's a quite challenging because um, usually we work um, in different cities, and um, I mean. Uh, 
the students are sometimes not available to visit the, the companies, but we try to keep uh, relations uh, with the companies as much as it, this is possible. And we uh, usually, while presenting the offers for the companies, what we do and what's our role and why it's beneficial to cooperate with us, we stress out that um, uh, IST is really taking care about these interns and, and about the application process. And for example, IST Poland is also approved as the um, organization to receive and uh, to receive students um, uh, in Poland. So uh, we also are part of the we we support the, the visa process so we, we can issue the invitation letters which sometimes could be the beneficial benefit for the uh, for your for your students sorry for the noises if you can hear some but my neighbors decided to renovate the flat and sometimes it can be like maybe some noise uh, you, you can hear so i'm sorry for that but i hope um the sound is good quality um yeah so here we will share Slides with you because we um that's um the, in the slide I also added the um, part uh, of from our um, um, cooperation offer with the companies uh, what what's our role and what's the company role so maybe it will be useful while uh, while doing the job the job raising countries. So uh, prepared for you is the summary of the useful links. So we collected the, the information um, in the, on one slide that could be useful for you while doing the job raising and while basically starting to work with, with ISD. Um, as uh, Hannah mentioned in the beginning, um, especially if you are quite new, this can be quite complicated um, with all to, to find yourself in your uh, in your IST world. So that's why um, the tools actually uh, that are crucial for us. It's it's exchange platform, of course, but we also uh, put the link for offer generator, which is quite new and it was prepared by marketing team that you can uh, also share with your uh, local committees or your national committee to to work with to. I facilitate the, the promotion of the offer. It's it's pretty easy. And I'm sure like when you check how it works, it's it's very simple tool to boost your promotion. Then of course, something very useful for the exchange people. So people from the exchange group. So if you use our guide, which uh, that this is the document that shows you how to work with the, with the exchange platform. And if you have any questions or issues, or maybe you would like to address something that something is, um, is not working or like you, there's some functionalities you would like to have, you will also find the information how to do it in this EP user guide. And sometimes something that is really uh, important. So, um, and maybe there are not many people that are using it is IST um, ASBL library, which is our uh, which, where you can find all the information about the process and the uh, board minutes, some marketing materials, information related to the exchange. Um, that's I would say very important source of information for the whole ISD community. And the last but not least, it's practical guide. It's a ISTs must read. So it's something that you have to really um, um, read when you start working with the exchange, especially taking into account the let's say changing in the namings of offers. If you have some doubts how to uh, how to uh, organize the process, there is also the um, the place where where you can find all the information and even the the, the graph about the job raising that we presented you today was also uh, sourced from from a practical guide. That's why we highly encourage you to to use uh, this tool and. And um, we will share, of course, the presentation with all the links. So we will, we hope that it will be useful information uh, for all of you. And I think that was uh, the last um, information that we had prepared for you. And now it's the time for you for um, uh, to ask some questions or maybe to start some some discussions. So the floor is yours, basically. If you have some questions, you can uh, you can start talking or you can raise your hand. So this is the time for you. Oh, I see one question on the chat. Um, is the user guide up to date? Uh, 
I think yes, but maybe Olga can can um, also relate to that. Uh, not uh, thank you, Via, for the question. I think the core philosophy of the exchange platform didn't change. So if you are looking for information on how to assign student, how to nominate student, I think this is still valid. Maybe some like uh, names of the uh, bottoms will will not be the same. But the, what we are planning to do it's really to make the exchange platform video tutorial based on the short videos. So this is work in progress. We we hope to 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 deliver it definitely before the high nomination season. Um, but I think in generally to to get an understanding how the EP works, the EP user guide is okay. But we didn't um, manage to update the the guide with all of the recent changes, screenshots, etc. And that's why also we decided to go with the videos, not during screenshots etc because this is super time consuming and our IT team is very ambitious and they keep changing the EP quite often so we said videos are easier uh, so that's like a changing updating the EP I think every day every week there is something small they update so that's that's why we will go with the videos but uh, it's not unfortunately ready yet but if you face any issues with the exchange platform, you need some support, please reach out to, to the exchange team. And as we did before the annual conference, we we are eager to, to, to offer like one-to-one -one training sessions if something is, uh, something makes the trouble. So we are here. Thank you, Olga, for your explanation. Oh, we have next question. Uh, I just want to know, uh, we have a question from Malek. Um, if, we, if we will be planning the appointments on the platform as usual. Uh, that's a very, very good question. And actually, I, I forgot to mention it. Uh, it was decided by the, the general conference that we don't that we don't need a platform, really, like the uh, the platform we had, the, the Seven platform um, we used re recently. First of all, because this is costly, it, it really cost a few thousand uh, euro. Uh, so we said, okay, it's... As also we noticed that even during this annual conference, many committees were meeting outside the platform. So it was not really worth to invest in it. Uh, what we will prepare and hopefully it will be out this week as always uh, this plan you can make appointments like the schedule that's a tool for you some committees really use it so we will prepare the spreadsheet also what if there will be any troubles for you in using uh, zoom or google meet like if you don't have the professional Google Google Meet account because the professional means you can make meetings longer than 40 minutes, I think. Then we can also support the committees, but we will send it out in, in the communication. In generally, to do the appointments, uh, you will have to do it uh, via email or WhatsApp, whatever works for you. And we also know this is how it mostly worked last time. So that's also we, we said, okay, it's does not mean does not make sense to invest in the in the appointment system because it's not really used fully and in the end it's costly. So I hope it it answers the the question. And you can talk, <laughs> and you can you know ask your questions by talking. Just unmute yourselves. It would be great also to hear you. Maybe see you. <laughs> Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, I, w I was the one asking the question, but uh, I just wanted to say hi and to thank you for the presentation. It was clear. Thank you. It's nice to hear that. Thank you. So, and maybe do you have some more questions? So, uh, yeah, I think we can 
will slowly conclude this session because I don't see any more questions here. And also no raised hands. So maybe Kinga and, and Hannah, if you allow, I can make like a little teaser as a gift and appreciation for your time for joining and uh, um, yeah, to, to do. So I want to show you how this your exchange efficiency reports will look like what what Hannah mentioned and I hope uh, I guess the Germany is okay with showing the report they will receive so this is how the exchange efficiency reports will look like so each committee will receive the unique link uh, so this is I think much more easier to, to, to follow and much more nice to work with than the PDF or Excel file. So uh, you have full insight to your committee um, efficiency, exchange efficiency um, performance. So you can already see how many students you have received and how many students you have sent. As we were talking about balancing, this is why it's on both sides. So it's, it's important. Uh, types of internships, the gender distribution study level, all of these informations you have. What I think it's also, you know, nomination flow, all of this data. Uh, but I think what's also important, it's okay, where the uh, um, you are sending from where you are receiving students. But I think what also it's very important to mention is also to see, okay, exchange internship efficiency versus global internship efficiency. And this is that most of accepted students are for through exchange internships because global internships are competitive. So you cannot guarantee. So what I want to mention, it's really, it really makes sense to invest in exchange internships and really to have internships you can trade so don't uh, don't even if you are like new committee, don't expect just to receive internships from the other committees because everyone wants to send students abroad as well. So that's that's also important, and this is really the most efficient way. Most of us the internships are at the exchange internship program. So this is just to mention, and this is just the teaser, and each committee should expect this dashboard. Um, by end of this week, of course, committees active in the in the exchange year 2024. So if you have joined after September, there is no data we can share with you. So this is not. So that's just the teaser. <laughs> yeah, and maybe just to because um, Olga explained to us that uh, this will this link will be um, like this tool will be public, but we will have. So for example, us as IST Poland will also have opportunity to see, let's say, IST Switzerland data, just not the uh, information about these reports, like this uh, these opinions about from the countries, right? Yes, so you should also be able to see, okay, how other committees are doing. This also should give you an overview, okay, if when you plan your exchanges, uh, exchanges and when you plan to talk to committees, uh, yeah, if you see the committee is in total having, I don't know, 20 internships, it does not mean to request from them 15 because they also want to diversify their exchange partners. So that also gives you a very, I think, good uh, information and data to, to, to plan your strategy and, and exchanges. So that's how we see it. Thank you, Olga, for this small teaser. <laughs> That's a you know benefit of of, of spending this hour with us. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we don't have any more questions on the chat, or maybe you have some other questions. No, oh, everything clear, perfect. Yeah, I think we have. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, it's clear. Okay. I, I thought it was a question, but it was just the opinion. Great. So I think we can conclude the meeting now. I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And I think if you have questions, you know how to reach us. And 
first and I really that's I keep it for, to the end I really would like to thank Kinga and Hannah so I asked to Poland and I asked to Switzerland for organizing these sessions because they they prepared everything they did the whole communication um slides etc and that was really their initiative so this is also what I think also what should be the core of IS the exchange community really to share the knowledge and not only exchange internships but also the um, the know-how so thank you very much King and Hannah um I wish more <laughs> this kind of initiatives maybe not only from Poland and, and Switzerland for, for for any other committee so if you have an idea, if you feel we should share some knowledge, please feel free. That's um, that's our community. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Olga, also for supporting us and explaining the um, schedule in more detail. <laughs> and also for everyone for joining. I mean, I think that's also great to see that so many people um, joined and uh, we're interested in what we had to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you so much and have a nice rest of the day, evening, morning. <laughs> <laughs> and looking forward to meeting you soon, maybe during the another meeting. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm leaving the meeting as well. Nihal, Sri Lanka. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. Bye. Bye. Thank you.